Hello, this is Bashar. In this tutorial, I will show you how we can use testing library in an Angular application. You can find the repository of this tutorial in the description. And this is just a basic Angular application. And all the differences, I just added this dependency, testing library Angular, which is one of the most popular testing library in web applications. And we are going to compare this one against the built-in testing functionality of the Angular. So this is the default application created by the Angular CLI. And basically we have this app and this one has this app spec. And if we go over this one, this is the default test module created by the Angular CLI. And we have the app component. I just wrapped this one with this one, this describe block, and this is the default test setup. And later uh, we will see the, the version with the Angular testing library. Now let's go over this one. This test setup is basically running this uh, function before each of these tests. And this one has this test bed coming from the Angular testing core library. This is configuring the testing module with the component we are testing. And if we have the dependencies like the forms or the, the HTTP client or any other module we are dependent on, we declare those like here in, we have the imports or we have the other things like we do in the app module, just like this one. So this is configuring the testing module then uh, again in the test via the test bed, we access to the component this is the component we are testing and this fixture this is returning the fixture the component fixture and from this fixture we can either access to the component instance which is app component uh, typescript file this is the class file or we can just access to the direct the element this native element which is basically the html output of that component uh, like this then we can use the queries uh, like we do in the browser uh, to access the elements we are looking for then we can check their text content or their attributes uh, to make sure it's all uh, have the expected values we are looking for so the testing for the default behavior is like this but uh, let's let's add a new test and uh, let's see what's going to happen uh, by the way you will see the tags in this uh, repository and you can just switch to the to test one tag in this one, uh, I add two test cases. One of them is for the, the default test setup right here. And I add this one. It says it should have resources header. And I'm just basically querying this one, resources header. And what I do is I, again, uh, get the fixture. And from this fixture, fixture, get the native element. And from this native element, I just query the this exact element, which is h2. Let's, let's check that one in app component HTML. Let's find the resources. And this is the h2. I get that h2 element and I just check if it is text content is resources. If we do the same test with the testing library, it gets simpler. All we do is just call render. This render is coming from the testing library. And also we have this screen and we use that for the querying. First thing we do is just render the app component. Then we use this screens query functions. And there are a bunch of functions like get by role is one of them. And this one is looking for this text. And the, the text associated with the element must be having this accessibility role. So we are using the accessibility roles and we are using visual references to find the elements we are looking for. We are not paying attention what is the actual element is. Like we don't care if it's H1, H2, H3 or anything. We only care about if it is heading and if it has this text. And basically we check this one and if we are expecting it to be true. So the advantage of this one is like we can just go to the implementation and change this to like we can just go to like do it like this h3 and if i just switch to the test window here we see the test is failing and the failing one is this one default test setup 
should have resources header. So this one is failing because we no longer have an element of h2, therefore this is failing. But the one with the testing library is working because we don't care about the exact element. We just look for a heading role element and then we just care about the text, visible text on that one. And if we just switch to the spec list right here, we can see this one is failing. It should have resources header. So one of the advantage of the testing library is it lets us to focus what the user is seeing. User does not really know what is the underlying element on that page. Now let's switch to another test. So just switching to the test two. So I'm just discarding the changes. So these tests are passing, but let's switch to the client. So the new layout is like this. We have this agreed uh, label and it is associated with this checkbox. And there is this submit button, which is disabled. And if we just click to this one, it checks the checkbox and the button is enabled. So the test we are doing right here is just testing this functionality. And if we go over the default test setup, Again, we have this before each. And in this one, we are uh, using this, this import forms module because in the implementation, if we check right here, this is the components uh, current behavior. We have this label, we have this input, and we are using this ng model, which is coming from the forms module. And this check is in the component. It is initially false. And when we check this one, it is changing to true. And then we use that check right here for this button, uh, for the disabled attribute of the button. And uh, basically we say this is disabled if check is false, otherwise it's going to be enabled. So in the test, what we do is we get the uh, na native element. Then from this one, we are querying the checkbox like this. We are querying the input element having this checkbox. By the way, I'm just going to collapse the, the the one with the testing library. We will go over that one. So we got this checkbox, then we are clicking to it. Then we do this fixture detect changes. This is actually an intentional behavior in the testing setup of the Angular uh, so that we can just um, test the behavior before the UI is updated. Uh, so uh, to force UI updates, we need to call fixture detect changes so that uh, this uh, checkbox click is going to be updating this uh, value uh, and th this is going to be updating UI uh, to enable the button. So we just uh, tell Angular to e go ahead and render the UI uh, with the latest changes. So then we can get the button here and we can just check its disabled property to be falsy. So this is the, the Angular default test version. And if we check the same test with the testing library, right here we have the setup parts, just like this one. Uh, we are uh, importing the forms module because our component is dep dependent on the forms module now. So we are rendering the, the app component. Then we are getting this checkbox based on the text we have here. We have this agreed label text. And from user point of view, a real user is associating this checkbox with a, a label or with a data, with a, with an information. And in test, we do the same approach. We, we look for the text a user looks for. Then we get the associated element. Then we have this fire event function coming from the testing library. We click the checkbox via this fire event. Then we are querying the button. There can be multiple buttons in this page. Uh, so we are again using the role functionality. We are looking for a button and it, that button must be having the text of submit. So like we uh, get the button we are looking for. Then we check the, the disabled uh, attribute for the button to be falsy. So compared to the, the default behavior, in this one, we don't need to manually force the UI updates or we don't, um, we don't have 
um, complicated queries to, to find the exact element we are looking for. We are just querying the elements like a user does in a web application. The user looks for the text to associate the elements with the, the behavior they are looking for. So we do the same thing here. So our tests are more likely what a real user uh, actions are. We are looking for an agreed label, uh, associated element. Then we click to that one. Then we are looking for the button. And we, we check if the button is in the state we are looking for. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.